how do we know the increase in autism isn't just from genetics or more careful diagnosis and people aren't just paying more attention and that people weren't always autistic and we just didn't notice it. Um, obviously, that's, you've, uh, that's been thrown around. People have been saying things like that who are not up on the information, but what's the answer to those people? And Jeffrey, tell us about the Bayer Monsanto Roundup trial. What is it? What is the current status of it? Have there been any rulings so far? Stephanie, okay. you want to take it away? Yeah, I'll start. Yes. Um, yeah, it actually really frustrates me to say that autism is genetic. And in fact, the truth is that there is a genetic component to it. And they have identified a number of genes that are risk factors for autism. But, it, but genetics doesn't go up exponentially. Genetics needs some kind of environmental factor to cause the rates to go up like that. It's not, a, it's not a genetic phenomenon that rates would go up. And to say that we had autism back when I was a child and we didn't notice it, 30% of the kids who have autism are nonverbal. And we certainly would have noticed nonverbal children in our environment back then. I think um, it's, it's really a convenient way to... Uh, dismiss a problem by just claiming that we're, that we're diagnosing it more. And I think in many ways we may be diagnosing it less because it's putting tremendous pressure on the school systems. When, you have a, when a child is diagnosed with autism, all of a sudden they're gonna cost a lot more money uh, to bring them up. You know, they, they have all kinds of special needs and so that they can get for free because of you know, various Disability Act compensations. And so the school system actually doesn't want to have, wants to have as few autistic kids as it can from the financial standpoint. And my question was, what's the, <laughs> I'm so taken um, by. Tell us about the Bayer Monsanto. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So um, in 2015, in March, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, which is the World Health Organization's uh, top cancer committee, which determines the cancer risks for all sorts of things, determined that glyphosate, the, what we're talking about in terms of Roundup, was a class 2A carcinogen, a probable human carcinogen. They said that it definitely causes cancer in animals, but there wasn't enough human data, but whenever they fed it to animals, there was sufficient evidence. So it causes cancer in animals, um, where it's used in high concentrations in, the, in human populations, cancer goes up. So there's correlation evidence, and it does cause oxidative stress and damage to the DNA, which can lead to cancer. And we can't say it's a definite can causing cancer carcinogen, but all, you know, it probably causes cancer. So as soon as that came out, Monsanto went into full gear trying to uh, orchestrate outrage. In fact, that was the quote from a document that was later forced into the public domain from these lawsuits, where they created all sorts of, they used their front agencies, their their friends in, in the farmer area. They, they just basically, did a full court press and the kind of, of horrible tactics that I've been writing about for years. Um, and I remember uh, it became a big news item. I, got, I was traveling and I got called by uh, the doctor's TV show and would I like to debate a Monsanto toxicologist on a farmer? Sure enough, we debated on national television and Monsanto was able to get the EPA to say, oh, no, 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 this is a one-off and it was their own people in the EPA. And it was, turns out, the, there was the strongest evidence for non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And there was a groundskeeper who, uh, Lee Johnson, who had a uh, terminal diagnosis and he was being represented by some attorneys and the judge allowed them to bring it to court quicker than normal because he wasn't expected to live long. And Monsanto, had set aside $260 million for all litigation costs mm -hmm. for uh, glyphosate for, related to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And they told Bayer who was purchasing them and, and Monsanto needed to be purchased because they were highly leveraged on glyphosate. Glyphosate was, the, was causing cancer. Glyphosate wasn't working in the, in, you know, with weeds anymore. Um, it was being questioned all over the place and they needed to expand their portfolio. So they were trying to buy others and they finally were bought by Bayer. And they convinced Bayer that there was no problem. Just a couple of months after Bayer bought them, the trial, reveal, you know, the, the trial revealed all the dirty tricks, some of the dirty tricks for Monsanto, making the jury so angry that they awarded 49 million in compensatory damages, but 200 or 39 million in compensatory damages, but 250 million in punitive damages. So the first 
the first um, receipt that Monsanto had to pay was for $289 million, more than they had set aside for all of them. Well, the judge made, brought it down to 20 million. But the next two also very high awards from juries. One couple, I remember it was this surreal feeling. I had Lee Johnson and his wife, I went out to dinner after this, the third trial. Lee Johnson and his wife were on one side, they had won the first trial. Right next to me were the Piliots. And they had just been awarded two billion, $59 million, two billion. The, the, the jury was so angry at Monsanto because it, it revealed all these documents and their nefarious ways. Well, that was also brought down by the judge. The, what was particularly exciting was the fact that when Brent Wisner, who was the lead attorney for two of these, he filed a, a motion to have the documents made public. And he I, I interview Brent, if you go to Responsible Technology, there's about two and a half hours of interviews. People describe it as more gripping than a, than a trial drama on television or than a movie. It is so exciting to hear this. And he, he filed this. He told me about this in the green room and the doctors because we went back after the documents became public. I looked and found that the person I was debating from Monsanto had been lying because what she was saying in private was the opposite of what she was said on the, on the stage. So I sent that information to the producer of the doctors and they had me and Brent Wisner on plus a plaintiff for an entire hour. So I was sitting with Brent Wisner and he told me the story where he, he filed a motion to release the documents to the public. And all that Monsanto needed to do was to file a no in response within 30 days. Ooh. And he was watching the, the, the clock go to midnight and they never filed. And he got really nervous and wondered what to do and let it go a little bit longer. Meantime, he set it up on a website. He sent it to different places. And at a certain point, he says, OK, go. And he hit send and it went all over the world. It went to and and Monsanto people freaked because they didn't realize that they had blown it. And they tried to blame him. And they got a lawyer. They got a judge. He was summoned before a judge. And Brent thought he was going to lose his license. Mm. But anyway, he talks about the details of that meeting. So dramatic. I'm going to let that go. But here's the point. The, the trial was the alarm that went around the world. The first alarm was the International Agency uh, for Research on Cancer. But there was a lot of effort by Monsanto to downplay it. Then the trial was enormous, not only because it revealed all the details that we now have, but because it was headline news around the world. And so the current situation is they tried to put an offer of about 12 billion in for the 125,000 plaintiffs that are now there, plus some future uh, filings. And they tried to do some shenanigans that would limit the ability for future uh, filings to, to make any money. And it's kind of unraveled. So some mm -hmm. people accept, some lawyers accept it on behalf of theirs, others haven't, and it's not clear. So what they're doing now, um, and I'm gonna be doing a Facebook live interview uh, the, so if you go to Responsible Technology, Institute for Responsible Technology and Facebook, you'll see me being in, I'll be interviewing one of the attorneys from this case, Monsanto Bear, paid someone who, who had sued them and lost. Okay, sued them and lost. It was not non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It was a very weak case. The only judge that provided the, the, a, a quick judgment was on this. So Monsanto got a it's only positive response from this particular weak case. But you see, if it's a single case and it's not appealed, there's no mm. precedent. You can't push it up to the Supreme Court. So they paid, they paid this man to appeal. Oh my God. So that he would then lose on the appeal and then that Monsanto could bring it to the Supreme Court and get precedent. So wow. they just wow. sent a letter to the judge saying, this is ridiculous, this is kangaroo court. I'm interviewing one of the authors of that letter. So go to our Facebook page and you will notice it'll be this week. You'll see it if you, if you watch this afterwards on replay, it'll be up there on a Facebook Live and probably on one of my podcasts at livehealthybewell.com. Wow. It's amazing what they get by with, but they're, they're getting found out. <laughs> so they're oh not going to be able it, to do this forever. I, I mean, I could speak for an hour about what they did. They hired you know, an expert on... On, on oxidative stress, 
to say, please tell us that our that Roundup doesn't cause that. He goes, oh no, it actually does. So they ignored his report, never <laughs> sure pulled it over to the EPA, which was illegal. And then Ghost wrote their own review paper and paid some scientists to mm. sign it and it had the exact opposite conclusions. And that wow. was what the EPA used. I mean, this was, it was, they, they, they used for their first study on, on cancer, they sent it to a BTI and in a study uh, um, and laboratory where it was so fraudulent, it was des described as the single largest scientific fraud in the history of the United States and possibly the world. And because they were, they took 40% of all the chemicals in the country and did the toxicological tests and rigged them all. And one of the executives that went to jail for BTI had been with Monsanto, then had gone to BTI while they were working on Monsanto stuff, then went back to Monsanto and ended up in jail for fraudulent practices. Wow. And that was the first of the studies on glyphosate. So it gets, it, I mean, I don't wanna go down too far. You get the point that it was all corporate deception. Every bit of it, 100% corporate deception. It came out in the documents. It's in a book now by Carrie Gillum mm -hmm. called The Monsanto Papers. I have an interview with her also in my podcast. She's a brilliant writer. She used to write with Reuters. Anyway, that's the current update on the fantastic trials against Bear Monsanto.